I made a super simple finger joint jig. I'm going to be making a couple of draws for my next project out of half inch plyoid, and I figured that using finger joints was a really strong way to join them. So I just made this really super simple jig that I clamped onto my crosscut sled. If you don't have a crosscut sled, you can clamp it onto your miter gauge as well. So let's get into it. The first step to making this jig is figuring out how wide your blade kerf is. So I did a stop cut on the table saw and then I took out my calipers to measure that kerf. I'm going to be making a pin that's the same width as that kerf. And since that kerf is so thin, I'm going to use my thin ripping jig. I lined up the calipers with the bolt on the jig to get the perfect measurement and then locked it down. If you don't have this jig or if you don't wanna make this jig, you could just do a couple of test passes until you get the correct width. Since I don't have a zero clearance insert and I'm going to be cutting a really thin strip, I put a piece of tape down to prevent that thin strip from falling into the gap in the throat plate. And the reason why I love that thin ripping jig, it was a perfect fit on the first try. And I didn't need a piece that was that long, so I cut off a little piece with my handsaw and the pin is ready. Next, I ripped a piece of plywood that's going to be the main part of the jig. I placed my crosscut sled on the saw and then I raised the blade so it was just above the half inch plywood I'm going to use for this joint. And then I took that plywood I cut earlier and I made one cut while it was against the fence. The pin fits perfectly in the slot, but it's just a little bit too long for the thickness of the material that I'm using, so I marked off where to cut it, and then I used my handsaw to bring it to its final size. To attach the pin to the piece of plywood, I used CA glue with the accelerator spray and just placed it in, making sure it was flush on the back and the bottom. Now here is the tricky part, finding the perfect distance between the pin and the blade. To do this, I placed the cutoff from the strip that I cut earlier in between the pin and the blade. Once I was happy with the placement, I adjusted my stop lock and clamped it down. The jig is done and ready to use. To use it, you take your piece and you place it next to the pin on the jig, clamp it down or use your fingers however you feel comfortable and run it along the saw. Now that you've made that first cut, you have a space for where to put the piece onto the pin. So you take that first cut and you place it on the pin and then you repeat the same process and you cut until you can't cut anymore. I'm using a flat tooth blade here. I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. It definitely makes a difference with this joinery. In order for the pieces to fit together, they need to be opposite of each other, like a puzzle. To do this, you flip the first piece around and place the first cut that you made over the pin on the jig. Then you need to butt the second piece next to it in order to make the first cut. This creates a gap instead of a pin for your first cut. When clamping it down, just make sure the bottom is fully flat against your sled, not like what I did there. So you don't need the first piece as a spacer anymore. You can now cut the joints the way that you did on the first piece by just placing each piece on the pin as you go until you can't cut any further. Now, this is why we do test cuts on scraps. My first attempt, it did not fit. The joint was way too tight. So this means that I need to move the pin on the jig closer to the blade. If the joint was too loose, I would need to move the pin further away from the blade. When making these adjustments, just make sure that you're doing really, really small amounts every time. I mentioned earlier, I was using a flat tooth blade. If you want this joint to look as clean as possible, I highly recommend it. Combo blades and crosscut blades have what's called alternate top beveled teeth. So if you use a blade like that, the tops of all the cuts will not be flat and they will have little points on the ends. So I'm gonna put a link to the blade I'm using down below. Now after my second attempt, the joint is perfect. I set the blade to be slightly higher than the material because sanding away at the excess is way better than not cutting the joints deep enough. After dialing it in, I'm really happy with the fit. It's tight enough, it's loose enough, there's room for glue, and I won't have to pound it together when I'm going to assemble it. So I know that there are a ton of finger joint jigs and box joint jigs out there. Some really complicated, some really simple. In this instance, for me, simplest was best. It worked out really well, the results are great. And now every time I want to make finger drawings using this blade, I already have this jig set up. I just need to play around with the height and position it correctly on my fence. So I hope this was helpful for somebody and thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm going to finish up this project.